In this video, we're going to discuss junk bonds and taxes. So a junk bond is just non-investment grade debt that has a high yield to compensate for its high risk. The tax code refers to a junk bond as applicable high yield discount obligation or AHYDO. Now, not all the interest incurred on a junk bond is going to be tax deductible. There are limitations, and in some cases, if you have a junk bond, the company that issued the junk bond can only deduct the actual interest paid out. It can't just say, well, I've accrued some interest, so I'm going to take a tax deduction. So I'm going to talk about when there are the limitations. So if it's a less than five-year maturity, you don't have to worry about the limitations. But if the bond has a maturity of more than five years, so let's say it's a 10-year junk bond, and the yield of maturity on the bond is at least five percentage points higher than the applicable federal rate, uh, then, so this is a NARC condition here. This is basically where we talk about the high yield aspect. And if you're wondering, well, how do we know what the applicable federal rate is? This is actually published by the IRS. So let's say that this was 6% and the bond's uh, yield to maturity was 13%, then we say, okay, it's, it's more than five percentage points higher than that. So if it's more than five-year maturity, more than five percentage points higher than the federal rate, and the bond had a significant original issue discount, OID. Now, I'm going to talk about what that is. Uh, if it's basically, if you have all three of these things, then there's going to be a limitation where you, the issuer of that bond cannot take any deductions for interest expense until it actually pays out interest. But let, let me go into this OID, the original issue discount, in more detail. Now, the simple scenario where there's an original issue discount is you just have a zero coupon note. So a zero coupon note is something where, let's say the, the issuer says, listen, uh, we're trying to raise money and we would like to, we, we promise to pay you, the investor, we promise to pay the investor uh, $500,000, okay? We promise to pay the investor $500,000, uh, you know, at six, seven years from now, something like that. And right now you only have to give us $100,000, so you give us $100,000 and, in, you know, six, seven years where we'll give you $500,000. And so there's no interest paid along the way. That's why it's called a zero coupon note. So the imp there's implicit interest, which is, hey, uh, the issuer is saying, look, I'll take 100000 and I'll repay you 500000 So that 400000 that difference there, is basically implicit interest. But there's no, it's, it's not like there's interest payments being made every six months or every quarter or anything like that. Okay, so when there's a zero coupon note, we'd say that the bond had an original issue discount. Okay, and so then this would qualify. So if it had more than a five-year maturity, more than five percentage point difference from the federal rate, and it was a zero coupon note, then we say, okay, you can't take any deductions for the implicit accrued interest. It's only when you actually pay out interest in cash. Now, this, the second scenario is a little more complicated with this original issue discount. Some bonds have a thing called a pay-in-kind PIK feature. Okay, Pay-in-kind, uh, it could be set up a number of ways. But one way is that the issuer says, okay, when interest comes due, I have the option of instead of paying cash for the interest, I could just say, I'll issue more debt. So basically, the, print, the, the amount I have to repay and say, say oh, I... I, uh, you know, originally promised to pay you uh, 500000 but now it'll be 550 or it'll be 600 or something like that. We'll just increase the amount I have to pay you and I'll, I'll pay you in the future. So when there's a pay in kind feature and the issuer has the option where they, they can defer uh, uh, more than one year of interest during the first five years, Okay, of the bond, if they could defer, whether they do or not, if they could defer more than one year of interest during the first five years, then we say, we say, okay, there is a significant original issue discount on this bond. Okay, so there now it gets a little more complicated because actually, if so, if a company was worried, the issuer says, oh, well, wait a minute, now I'm not going to be able to take tax deductions for its interest uh, because I've got this pay in kind feature. What they can do, they can avoid these rules in this tax treatment if they include a catch-up feature in the bond where it says, okay, well, after five years, um, any interest that was accrued, we, we have a feature where we will catch up and we will we'll get caught up and pay that accrued interest. Okay, so they can avoid this kind of treatment. But if they don't have that, then when you have a bond with a pay-in-kind feature and you defer, defer up uh, more than a year of interest during the first five years, then it's treated the same way as if you had a zero coupon note. Either of these case, these are significant original issue discount. 
So if you have a significant original issue discount, you have a high yield bond, more than five percentage points higher than the federal rate, and you got more than a five year maturity, you, the, the issuer is not going to be able to take tax deductions for any interest until they actually pay the interest in cash.